Chapter 1 You are listening at FameTV.info Serena was a genius doctor who was selected as the youngest royal physician at age 19. She had been called a prodigy since she was a child and was famous for being able to treat an incurable illness. She loved and respected her patients more than anyone else, and she treated the poor for free, but she has encountered a problem. I'm not drinking. Because in front of her is the emperor, and all he does is roll around in bed like a lazy man. Your Majesty, I heard you had another fever yesterday. So I've got a tonic to lower the fever for you. Serena put on her business smile and held up the tonic to him once more, she had returned back in time once before so she was familiar with Emperor Azade's true nature, let's be calm. Calm, it's over this time if she fails to curry favor with the young emperor I don't want to die again, Serena nervously hoped that the emperor would accept the bowl of medicine. But the emperor was not a pushover. This is the, evolving truth, about him that has always been an obstacle for Serena, I hate bitter things. The emperor sniffed and turned his head in the opposite direction of the medicine, this time, it seems like he's using the excuse that children often use, that, it's too bitter. I won't take it, excuse, ha, huh, I can't catch a break. Serena cracks a small smile. She wanted to grab his face and make him gulp down right now. It's true that I'm doing this to save myself but. It would be nice if both of us could live, Serena struggled to calm down and quickly repeated the words, calm down, ten times, after a while, Serena put her business smile on again. She presented a glass bottle filled with candy as if she had expected all this, I knew you would be like this, so I prepared candy for you. If you eat candy after taking the medicine, it will be less bitter. Azade reacted to Serena's words. Before she knew it, he tilted his head and set his eyes on her, she was seen smiling awkwardly in his glass dot like blue eyes, after a while, Serena's eyes glistened as he reached for the medicine but the hand pulled away from the potion and pointed at Serena instead, you, what's your name? Yes. Serena did not answer as she was bewildered and he responded with another question, you've been acting very suspiciously. Serena rolled her eyes. Azade stared at Serena with keen eyes as if she looked even more suspicious. Why do you keep wanting to feed me that medicine? Aren't you an expert? Yes, because if you die, I'll die, too. And what's suspicious about a doctor taking care of a patient? Serena screamed inside, feeling like she was going to burst. But he looked calm I am the imperial physician selected to prioritize and look after your health. I already prioritize and look after my health. Azaid smirked, and the maid standing behind him moaned, well, that's their automatic response whenever handsome men smile. But Serena was not impressed when that handsome face smiled that I in her eyes, he was nothing more than an unfortunate handsome patient, yes, so why don't you take the medicine for me? Serena grinned as she held out the medicine again gently. Then Azade giggled and refused Serena's request, what if you're lying? What, how do you know it's not poison? I don't trust anyone. Only I know my body very well, so back off. Azade lay back in bed and covered himself with a blanket that he was a lazy man who never gets out of his bed just like back when he was confined. Serena's anger rose up, ha, ah, he says he's suspicious. How can he not even take a sip, Serena's head seemed to have a fever, Serena managed to resist trying to open the lid of her head, this person, whose fever reached nearly 40 degrees last night and made the maid so worried, refused to take his medicine, how can I save an emperor who doesn't follow the doctor's prescription even if you send him a genius doctor? I think he wants to die. Do you want me to kill you? No, I'll get myself killed if I leave him like that, Serena thought to herself and shook her head. An o, he must not die. If I fail again, I will only suffer another death, Serena said with a hard smile. If you're worried about that, I'll show you. You will. Yes. Okay. Show me. The emperor turned his body around and rested his head on his arm to look at Serena, naturally, his undergarments became loose and she caught a glimpse of his chest. The maids coughed and blushed even if his outfit looked like that of a beggar. His face would be the reason for their reaction, but Serena didn't bat an eyelid. Only then did the emperor reach for the medicine, but, cough, Azade collapsed coughing up blood before taking the medicine. 
and Serena was executed for assassinating the emperor. It was already her second death. So on the third turn, arc. That son of a bitch emperor. Serena opened her fierce eyes, tearing her purple hair out. After returning, she decided that I'm going to die anyway. Let's just hit that bastard emperor and die. Asterisk 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 Serena calmed down and thought to herself, what can a genius doctor do that if the patient refuses to take the medicine that no matter who it is, you won't be able to save that bastard emperor I've dealt with you all this time because I pitied you, so why do I have to go through this bullshit twice? Serena trembled and spewed out swear words. As aid can Croton that he's currently the only one in the lineage of the imperial family of the Croton Empire and the illegitimate son of a maid who was confined to a separate palace before he ascended the throne that he had blue eyes, unlike other imperial families who had red eyes. The red eyes were a symbol of the Croton Empire and a sign of power, this was because the imperial family of Croton, the land of fire, became more painted with red as its power increased. Thus, the emperor, who saw Azade's blue eyes, hit him in the palace as soon as he was born that he was powerless anyway, so the other imperial families also had no interest and cut him off. No one cared if he was dead or alive. It was because those who could not use the power of fire could not become the emperor. Later, when the late emperor fell ill and had his last breath, there was a battle for imperial power between the crown prince and the imperial princess of the Croton Empire. It was a storm of blood and wind and there was no remaining prince or princess that I in the middle of all the fighting, no one paid attention to the imprisoned prince, the problem was that all the imperial families died in the fight. So the nobles rushed to find Azade, the abandoned prince that he didn't have their power, but he had the blood of the imperial family, so they were determined to get him to take over somehow but when Azade became the emperor, he showed his true colors. He also had the power of the Croton family. It's as powerful as the first emperor. It wasn't because his eyes were blue that he didn't have their power, blue fire is stronger than red fire. The Croton Empire overlooked that very thing, Medea, Azade's dead mother, forced him to hide his strength to avoid political warfare, since he had no family on his mother's side, if they knew he had power, he would have been the first to be killed. Medea's foresight was incredible. Thanks to her, Azade was able to acquire the throne, Azade only placed some cutlery on a table, the nobles couldn't help but kneel before his overwhelming power. They set him up to be their puppet, but doing that was the same as appointing an uncontrollable tyrant, fortunately, he was suffering from an unknown disease. So he didn't use his power much, and perhaps because of his birth, he was lazy and extremely hated receiving help. There was no such thing as a wild beast, Serena suspected his illness was due to blue eyes, which were different from the other blue eyes, however, such a hypothesis was not enough for a proper investigation that IT was because the fussy emperor won't let us examine or touch his body, so it was impossible to find out the cause of the disease, then why am I here? Why don't they just ask for a fake blessing from an astrologer? Serena bit her lower lip again in tears. The emperor should at least take good care of himself, but he didn't seem to be willing to do that, perhaps the memory of being confined was a severe trauma to him. That so far Serena has been trying to persuade Emperor Azade as kindly as possible, the first time, I died because I was scared of him, an emperor, so I couldn't do my job properly. The second time, I was confident that I knew what to do, when the emperor lived longer than the first time by trying to coax and comfort the emperor, I thought I had survived. But eventually the emperor died and Serena was decapitated. I'm not a phoenix, but I've died and been resurrected twice that I die, and I die again, until when will I keep having to take care of the emperor and die doing it?" Serena shook her fist as she recalled the hardship she had to go through, son of a bitch emperor. I'll pluck out your head and kill you myself. Listen to the full novel at fametv.info, direct link in the description.